Hello everyone and welcome to my GIS course CE375 and today we're gonna talk or start talking about coordinate systems of mapping systems of GIS so let's directly jump into our presentation so we're gonna talk today about different things it's the base and the core of the GIS science is how to put locations on the earth so we're going to talk about different things, including something called geodesy, which is surveying, datums, which are reference systems which we, that we use to do our coordinates, and the last video will talk about map projections, and finally, this will be related to coordinate systems that we'll be doing throughout this chapter and this part. Uh, I would ask you guys to read any chapter in coordinate systems in any GIS textbook, in our textbook in this class, it's going to be chapter 2. So let's move directly. So what's the meaning of georeferencing? It's you want to locate stuff accurately in a map. So that's what you want to do. This is called geo. Geo means the shape of the earth and to reference that by using a coordinate system. We use it too for accurate mapping and results for a really good GIS system that is accurate to use it in a project, and in an engineering project, you need some accuracy in terms of location. Uh, it will help select. It will help us select appropriate map projection for a particular GIS project. It will help us know exactly what map should I use for this area or this country or this city. So we're gonna learn in this uh, in this part here. So what's the meaning of datums? What is an ellipsoid? What is a geoid? and what are the different coordinate systems that we have in our engineering GIS work. So, what is the shape of the Earth? The shape of the Earth is a sphere. It's not a map. And we talked before about how can we find locations without distortions. It's very hard to produce spheres, even though it's easier now digitally on the computer. But physically, it's so hard to do that. That's why people started to use maps. And the importance of GIS now is either to map location inside your globe or to try to find the same location in a map and the exact location of this in a map. So why is GIS different than any other database? We talked about this because it contains spatial data. It includes coordinates that define location, shape, and extent of an object. So your GIS doesn't only tell you uh, information about this location gives you also spatial data. So it tells you number one, if I'm having here a road, number one, it tells you where is the location of different points of this road, what is the shape of this road, the length, and also the extent of this road going from one place to another. So it tells you the shape and the extension. Uh, so we're going to learn how can we measure coordinates on number one, the globe, the curved surface. How can we have two points or three points and measure the distance or the area on a curved surface? Or if you're going to do some kind of transformation into a map, how can we do some kind of transfer into flat maps by means of projection? So let's also remember the meaning of the word jealousy. You might have had this in your surveying class. Jealousy is equal to surveying actually. But it has just a twist. What's your twist here? Your twist is that the science of measuring shape of the earth. So here the earth and the sphere here, the, the curvature of the earth comes into account when you measure the shape of the earth. And we use some kind of uh, references here or helpers. We use something called ellipsoid. I'm going to learn what's that in a second. Joids and some measurements of gravity. We call it gravitational measurements to know exactly what is your z elevation of your points on the earth so again geodesy is a kind of some kind of a, uh, advanced level of surveying the word map projection like we said in the previous slide here it's the means of transformation of your location from a curved surface into a flat map and how can you find the location here go from surface into this kind of flat map so why is it very complicated three reasons number one we always learn this in school that earth 
is in a map and the map is in a paper yeah sometimes we can see this kind of globe but we're used to it as a Cartesian coordinate system our perspective of earth is that's flat not it's not flat we know it's for sure it's a sphere but we, we we tend to learn it in a book in a map so it's flat so flat map means that special areas in the north like i showed you last time there's some kind of distortion either in the shape the size the shape and size together and the direction as well so a flat map causes distortion to the geometry straight lines will appear bent and vice versa bent lines will appear straight in these maps sometimes so we want to choose what is the best projection from curve to a flat map coordinates apparent on large area map so here it's very important for us to know the coordinates on this point so we can have a large map we don't want distortion we want exact location when we for example imagine that a pilot does not have the exact location and he flies his airplane in a wrong direction well so we need this kind of navigation everywhere uh, not only engineering projects but in different other disciplines we talked about this this is the shape of the earth we do a tons of different kinds of projection i'm gonna talk about this in detail in the second video or the third video on uh, how can we change the shape of the earth and put it into a map and what kind of distortion will happen distortion here compared to this one compared to this one and this is what i told you before it was least distortion it's like peeling uh, the shape of the earth like an orange you peel it like this and you take it without the least distortion possible so let's now talk about coordinate system so number one why is it so complicated to this projection number one or why because number one or why is it complicated to use the earth as a sphere number one we use it as a or as a cartesian system number two the problem with earth is not a sphere oh so it's even an irregular shape it's very difficult to model and we want to know okay this is my earth how how will i model it how will I find a shape, a regular shape that will best represent my Earth? Will it become a sphere? Will it become something called an ellipsoid, which is like an egg shaped? Or I do projection and it turns to be at the end to be a, a flat map. And I think we're going to talk about today, there's some other surface, we're going to use something called the geoid. So you can see here, we can use different surfaces that tries best to represent a reference to map this land. So the Earth is very difficult to model. What shape do we do? And we call this shape your datum. Datum is a reference thing that you relate to. Once approximation that people use and we all use even in a globe and when we show you see a globe it's, it's a sphere however the earth is not a sphere number three why is it so hard to use the earth as a sphere because it has some errors some inaccuracies in measurements and what system should we use so we, we, we've answered the question why is it complicated and why we need this coordinate system so the rule of thumb is that we understand coordinate system used for all data convert to the same unified coordinate system prior to any analysis so let's now just jump directly and talk about this uh, datums as i told you the earth is very regularly shaped so we want to find the foundation so a datum or a datum we want to find some kind of a datum what's this datum it's a reference or foundation surface against which accurate position measurements are made for example, it identifies zero in a measurement scale. So when we are measuring this distance here and we use the ruler, this will be our datum, the zero. In this case here, we're going to use some kind of a regular model so we can measure and do some measurements using some equations on a regular shape and use this the data. And this will become our reference or foundation surface so we can start now measuring distances between two points like we did in our lab uh, in us there are two datums so we use in us two 
kinds of data, something called horizontal data to find the location in a horizontal way, meaning that you have here two coordinates tells you the location where you are on the Earth. And another datum, where you let's say you're here in the mountain, you want to know what's your elevation when we use in surveying. Remember when we use leveling. So we have horizontal and vertical datums. In the U.S., uh, NSRS, which is the National Spatial Reference System, is the foundation for georeferencing used by different professionals like surveyors, cartographers, and so on. Let's talk a bit about uh, history here. Uh, this science is not new. I know people think that yeah, after we developed our satellite systems, it's new. Actually, it started from the ancient Egyptians and ancient Greeks when they had their own ideas of how to measure the distance on the Earth. So they had different experiments using some astronomy and using the light of the sun, using shadows, and using the stars as well. For example, uh, Aristotle and Pythagoras wanted to measure the radius of the Earth. You need to know they had an idea, yeah, the Earth is round, and you want to measure what is the circumference and the radius of the Earth. So how did they do it? They said, okay, you know what, let's measure on the same time in the Earth the angle, the angle between two points on Earth. We want to find this angle here. And from this angle, we can cut, and it's easy to measure the distance between the first city was Alexandria, the second city was Sain, and they sp specified a specific day uh, where the light rays, where there is no shadow whatsoever at Sain, and then they measured the angle where of this angle of this uh, light ray from the sun, and since the the light rays are parallel between the two cities. They assume the angle is going to be alpha in this case, and they use that to calculate. And they found alpha to be this angle here. Knowing alpha, and this is simple mathematics here, knowing alpha and knowing the distance between the two points between Alexandria and Sihin, they were able to get in. So it was very kind of really accurate, not that accurate, but it's kind of really uh, close to what we have right now. And they found. And they found that the circumference of the Earth was around 40,000 kilometers. So this was the first experiment. Another experiment is using uh, stars. So also between two cities, Rhodes and Alexandria, uh, they, they just had a plumb up, two cities. So we have here 90 degrees and they started looking at the this uh, using this specific uh, equipment, looking at this star, and finding the difference in angles, and also they were able to to down calculate from the horizon line the angle theta, uh, and then from from theta and the distance between the two cities, a they were able also to calculate the radius and the circumference of the Earth. So this is uh, was another way to calculate measures using the Greek and the ancient Egyptians a uh, long time ago. So it's, it's some, not something new for people to try to map stuff and also to find different uh, locations on the Earth and also to they want to figure out, okay, what's the radius of this Earth we're living at? So, now let's define what's the meaning of ellipsoid and sphere. This is the horizontal datum that we use to measure everything on Earth. This is the Earth, it's a very irregular shape, and we want it as much as we can to specify a regular surface that will best specify our Earth. And because the Earth turns around its uh, one of its poles, which passes through the North and South Pole, and because of the gravity and turning around 24 hours, one rotation every single day, it happened that this became the shortest distance and it turned into some kind of an egg shape and these are the different number one circumferences you can see here between the north and the, the south pole 
they found that this circumference is around 39,000 kilometers measuring the circumference around the equator which is going to be the bigger part here it's a little bit more 40,000 kilometers also then they measured the radius of the earth they found that the radius along the uh, equator which is radius from the center to the equator is around 6378 kilometers a little bit less when you want to measure the radius up to one of the poles the north or south poles so we'll, this is the best that's why they said the best way to model our data the best way to model the earth is what we call here an oblate ellipsoid it's flattened at the poles because of rotation around the shorter axis and i'm going to learn something called f flattening in this class i'm going to ask you to measure the flattening for every uh, ellipsoid is there more than one ellipsoid yes there is there are different kinds of ellipsoids based on different history they try to model as much as we can this irregular shape of the earth this might be an ellipsoid you can see here this might be a different ellipsoid and the more points we get we can have a better representation a better ellipsoid of the earth so uh, at the beginning they said you know what it's a sphere so we have a radius of the sphere and that's it this will be the best representation of the earth but since this is the shape of the earth they say you know what let's best you see the black line here and also the blue line let's try to best represent the earth using what we call here the black line here which is called here the ellipsoid some people also call it the spheroid spheroid is not as a sphere sphere is different that's a sphere that's called the spheroid or ellipsoid that's the difference between both so it tries best to represent the earth's surface so we can now start to find and you notice here i put points on the actual terrain but actually when i measure the distance using an equation like we're going to do now you're going to measure this on an ellipsoid not the actual terrain because it's hard because here we're using an, uh, uh, the actual earth going up and down so it's not going to be the accurate distance so we want to measure it or model it on an actual ellipsoid or spheroid uh, we have now three surfaces the actual surface the ellipsoid that best tries to model the surface and later on in a few minutes we're going to learn what's the meaning of a third thing something called a geoid we're going to learn this in the third video so what are these three surfaces one is the actual surface and the other are two models that try to best figure out how does this surface look like the geoid is used for vertical referencing and the ellipsoid is used mainly for horizontal referencing when i say horizontal i'm saying here x and y for this one i want to find z the elevation from this geoid and you notice at any point now there's going to be something called an n and also we're going to learn what is the separation between the two surfaces which we call here n so here let's now define what is the meaning of an ellipsoid an ellipsoid is, is, is as simple as if you have an ellipse an egg shaped and this ellipse started rotating around this axis here passing through the two poles 100 360 degrees it will give you an egg three-dimensional shape and every ellipsoid has two axes and two radii this is called the semi-major semi, uh, axis A and this is called semi-minor axis B so again let me put it here in the drawing the red one here is called the semi-major axis A measured from the center of the earth to one of to the equator so it's the, it's at the equator and it's the big number here three six three seven eight and then a smaller one when you go here from the center of the earth to the pole we have the smaller radius which we call here the semi minor axis b which is measured from the center of the earth's mass so this is how we work with an ellipsoid now we have an ellipsoid which looks like this semi major semi-minor and you have a 
surface that you can now start measuring distances on it should be very easy and very simple to measure distance on and we're going to do this today also it's going to be easier for you now to start if you want to do a projection to a paper map we can also do that so it's used as a reference surface for making horizontal when i say horizontal reference it means what we call here longitude and latitude measurements in geodetic networks uh, and let me show you some different some examples of these uh, ellipsoids or spheroids one of the most famous ones something called the world geodetic system wgs 1984 we're going to see this in arcgis in our next lab one of the ellipsoids it's called WGS 1984. It has a specific radius A, semi major radius and semi minor radius B, and it has a specific location on the center of the Earth. And since it's using US, probably it's the best system for mapping the northern hemisphere, including the United States and Canada. And it's used, this ellipsoid is used by our GPS that we have everywhere in our phones and cars and any GPS system that we use use this kind of ellipsoid Do we have more? We have most, more than 25 different ellipsoids used nowadays uh, Let me just jump here to different uh, ellipsoids So it, this, these are some examples here One that's used in Australia You can see here the difference between the semi-minor, major and semi-minor Where is it used? The one I was telling you about is this one here, and it's used by NASA and used for GPS. Also, a very famous one, this guy here, GRS 80, and it adapted North America, and it's also used uh, also in US. So we have here, you can see very very few differences in meters and maybe less, and these are the different uh, ellipsoids that use. Another one that you're gonna see a lot. A very older one that's used in older surveying and it has been adjusted since it was developed in 1866 by mr clark and it's used also for north america and i'm going to show you how he created this as well one used in australia and if you're just going to say here it's a perfect sphere this will be my radius of a perfect sphere so these are different models of, of modeling the earth so let's get back here so Let's now calculate what's the meaning of the flattening of ellipsoid. It tells you how egg-shaped it is compared to a complete sphere. Is it a... let's put it this way. Is it a football? Or a soccer ball? The flattening will tell you that. So flattening is, is so simple. It's equal to the following. F equals A, which is the semi-major radius, minus the semi-minor radius, divided by A. If we calculate it for our 19 uh, WGS 1984, we just subtracted these two, and there is no square here, don't put any squares, divided by, this needs to be changed, I just did it while sleeping, it's going to give you F equals, divided by A, it's going to give F equals 1 over 300. So, our Earth, let's just move it, take, do some... Uh, Definitions here. So our Earth here, either we're going to use a sphere with this kind of radius, either use an ellipsoid, and here with the semi-major radius of this, or polar radius of that, and that's one that I just give you an example here. And the flattening of this kind of ellipsoid is one over three hundred. And you can go to the different ellipsoids here, and you're going to have different values of flattening. For example, here if I'm going to use the one in Australia, it's going to have just a very 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 minor change in the value of flattening so uh, let's talk now about the globe the globe is is the try to, to model the earth as, as, a, as a globe shape and I'm going to learn here the meaning of the word graticule the graticule is when we superimpose on this globe if you have a globe which is some kind of like bowl shaped of the earth you can see that in Google Earth and we put lines here, we put circles, which we call here the graticle. These circles here are called meridians, and they are circles that meet all in the North Pole and the South Pole. 
and the other lines we call here parallels or these are called also longitudes and the parallels are also called latitudes this shape here is called a graphical so it's interposed on the globe and consists of spherical coordinate system based on lines of latitude parallels and longitudes which you call here meridian on the earth any two points you want to pass find the short distance between these two points to find the short distance on a sphere imagine that you have a thread on this sphere this thread will be something curved like this it will be part of what we call here a great circle the great circle is a circle from if we just have a this thread here as a surface it's definitely going to pass through the center of the earth so the circle formed on the surface of the earth sphere by plane that passes through the center of this sphere examples of that any meridian here passes through the sphere so if you're going directly from north from charleston to mexico here this will be a shortest distance here because it passed through the great circle which is one of the meridians when we talk about the latitude which is the parallel here the only great circle is this one here which you call here the the greatest circle that passes through what the equator right so it's the equator here that's the great circle so if i'm directly moving from let's say uh, somewhere in south america directly east it will be the shortest distance because it passes through the short the, the, the great circle of that so passes through the center of this sphere used to measure short distance on a sphere any meridian the equator and for a 12 inch globe the one that you find in your schools this is the scale it's like a model mean that it's 1 to 42 million of the actual earth so this is what we call here a globe before we do any projection and have this into a piece of paper so this is shows you here the nasa actual earth there's definitely no lines in the actual earth but when we want to model it and find different values we put here the graticule you can see here we have two types of lines or two types of circles actually the one here that converges at the north and south pole these are all called meridians meridians are used to calculate time to find the time zones of the earth and then we have here what we call here the parallels and the parallels get smaller and smaller and smaller till they become zero at the poles this creates what we call here a graticule so let's get back here to the ellipsoid so here we have the semi-major and semi-minor axis so again the ellipsoid is an ellipse that rotates around this rotation axis passing through the poles we talked about the different types of ellipsoids uh, and every ellipsoid you can see here different values of flattening different values of major and minor axis one thing um, i might be asking you what is the flattening of this kind of ellipsoid again it's a minus b divided by a also ever since every ellipsoid is different then when we want to measure one degree of latitude what do you mean by that this is a latitude and you want to measure a degree of latitude i'm going to tell you what's the meaning of degree now in a second then what speed what will be the distance of this one degree of latitude we cannot do it in longitude i'm going to tell you why because it differs from one place to the earth so this is one degree two degree and so on till you go to the north pole so this is how it works one degree of latitude for this specific ellipsoid is about 110.591 meters so 100 almost 111 kilometers so this is the number i'm going to be using when we want to find an approximate value of distance around the earth is 111 kilometers in early times this is how they try to figure out what is the best ellipsoid remember when we talked about clark in 1866 how did he do it he said okay this is the us if i measure a distance from east to west this will be giving me some kind of an ellipsoid around my major axis 
so we measured the distance of this any distance between any two points here and we also can measure the angle and a and here we will be able to calculate a and b which is a different distance let's do it for east and west and for north and south and this will give him the best ellipsoid that will best model the shape of the earth around the united states you can do it in australia you can do it in asia you can do it in india and europe this is how and this is the the way they use it's very similar to the uh, the equipment we had in surveying the transit or the tudelite to measure some kind of an angle this angle will let you know okay what is the curvature of the earth in this part here and the curvature of this earth so we may use here uh, this to calculate the a and b and figure out what is this specific ellipsoid for this area so now let's talk a little bit more about longitudes and latitudes uh, longitudes and latitudes we divide the sphere into stack of latitudes so we have here this latitude here which is called the equator and we have parallel latitudes that get smaller and smaller and smaller till we have this circle here so there are circles that have smaller radiuses the radii till it reaches here the north and south pole where we have zero so imagine it like like pancakes we have small pancakes or slicing the orange into different parts the other way around when we have longitudes we slice the earth with great circles and they all pass through the north and south so they all have the same radius this is called the longitude it's like slicing a, 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 an apple or an orange from the same point on the up there so let's now define it into time so every so since the earth turns around itself in 24 hours so 360 degrees is equivalent to 24 hours since it turns around 360 degrees it's equal to 24 hours so this gives me this equation here one hour is 15 degrees of longitude between two lines here and this gives me the different time zones so again one hour is 15 degrees of longitude why because the whole 36 degrees is 360 degrees gives me 24 hours uh, can we convert degrees into other units yes we can can we convert degrees into a mile also yes we can let me show you how so for an ellipsoid uh, and for this kind of longitudes and latitudes we want to define first here the poles and the equator we want to define the geographic coordinates meaning here meridians and parallels and here we want to figure out well, okay if we go up here what will be the distance between these two points here so one degree longitude let's move here at the equator one degree longitude will be equal also remember this number here 111 kilometers but that will be at the equator when we go up here one degree or 10 degrees or 360 degrees will be zero because we're at the pole they all converge into one and that's the problem here but for the latitude one degree of latitude is 111 kilometers it goes from 110 to 111 at the poles so there's a little bit of, of changes here because of this ellipsoid thing so geographic coordinates occur on a curved surface long lines of medium converge at poles conversion cause this kind of distortion so I'm going to stop here guys and I'm going to have another video where we start talking directly about how to calculate coordinate systems and the different coordinate systems of our engineering and GIS work. Thank you guys and see you in the next video. I will uh, turn off my video right now.